Hey everybody, thanks so much for joining me today on my channel. Um, I have a little project here. We all love Eileen Hall's notebook dies and journal dies. This is the one, not the newest one that's out. I have that on coming, but um, this is um, the notebook die. So it measures, when it's just cut out on a mat board here, it's 8 by 5. So a really nice size. Uh, it fits the passport journal pages inside, which is nice. Let me show you one that I have made here. Super fun. Um, I uh, did the smooshing technique here uh, with some different inks. And then I went ahead and heat embossed with some copper on there. And then I, um, this is some tonic specialty paper. It's like handmade paper that's got this like sort of almost looks hammered some lace some velvet and then I used a wax seal that I made to put on top of that so I love how that came out and um, today I'm just going to show you how quick and easy it is to make one of these it's super easy you cut it out in one pass which is really nice it doesn't even take up the whole mat board or uh, it just fits your regular cutting pads which is on the big shot so that is helpful um, so this is the sizzle mat board you can use carb you know, uh, not cardboard, but chipboard, um, felt, leather, whatever, <laughs> whatever you've got lying around. Uh, so this is the mat board. So um, it has these three score lines, but before I do that, I'm going to kind of do the smooshing thing first. So you can pick out some like ink colors. I'm going to use shaded lilac, I think, and let's see, try the shaded lilac and um, a blueprint sketch so kind of a royal blue and then a more of a lilac obviously hence the name got a little mess going on here so what's nice about the oxides is you can kind of um, just kind of put them right on I've got that Tim Holtz glass glass mat you can use a glass cutting board um, uh, you know all sorts of elements there so I just got that ink there on my mat and then I'm just going to kind of Zhuzh it with some water here. And then you're just going to kind of dab randomly. <laughs> I love the science. <laughs> and I'm getting this sort of weighty, marbly, watercolored look. And you can do both sides if you want. I'm just going to start on this one side. You can also run this through with some paper if you don't want to do this. You can also use acrylic paint. I'm um, going to mop this up here. You can go ahead and dry this layer before we put on our next one with our heat tool. So once it's dry, we're able to add another layer. So um, I'm going to add more of, whoa, more of this shaded lilac here because I don't feel like I got that as much represented. I need to put some more water in my also um, do the stamping and things. want to kind of get it all in the nooks and crannies here. Okay, so once you feel like you got kind of a base of color down, we can go ahead and start some more layering. So I'm going to use like a, any blending tool that you have there. Um, and just kind of come in and get some of those corners. Like that color, very pretty. Be kind of random with it. Okay, and then the shaded lilac. Then you can kind of see which side you're wanting to face up. Because it's distressed oxides, we can go ahead and um, wet that a little bit and give it a second to kind of lift that color up to give us more of a mottled look. While I'm doing that, I'm going to put some more water in my... It's been sitting there, so you can kind of come in and, and it just gives you another layer of pattern and texture. I like how that's looking. I like those two colors together also use this with your gel press that would be fun and then you can get um, I'm not worried about the inside because I can 
deal with that. I also paint on these sometimes, like floral images and things. But I think we're going to do some um, gold embossing. So this one I did sort of browns and tans and with the copper. And I think on this one I'm going to do the gold and um, with the blue and things. Creative stamping. I think that's creative stamping. Um, I'll do this leafy thing here. And for this, you want to use your VersaFine clear ink. Uh, for this particular, since we're going to make it gold here. And then just kind of randomly stamp. You won't be able to see it just yet. <laughs> but uh, as soon as we get some... just put this back in the pot and if you feel like you've got some there that um, you didn't want just take a dry brush and get rid of that all right so then you can come in with a different stamp now in whatever pattern you can keep going um, you can do the spine but I thought we might cover the spine like I did the other one so to get these score lines I like to go on the edge of a table which I can't fit in the camera but it's just as simple as bending them really and then you get that now if you don't like whoop, where's my if you don't like that white in there you can just take a fine tip marker or some paint and put that in there no big deal right and then there are different ways you can bind this. You could poke the holes in there and do the regular binding. You could, um, you know, finish your inside first. You can wrap rubber bands around there, hair ties, I've seen her do all sorts of things. Um, I, on this one, wrapped some elastic that I usually thread my traveler's notebook with, and then I covered the spine so you don't see the, um, the things there. But uh, that whatever you have in your stash and make a really pretty little book and that's all there is to it so I just thought I'd show you that die that's her journal die super easy to use um, and I'll go ahead and finish this up